So in a previous video, I told you guys that Lizzo made case law by going after her 100% that bitch trademark that the United States Patent and Trademark Office originally tried to deny. But Lizzo litigated that thing and she made precedent by allowing the United States Patent and Trademark Office to use Urban Dictionary as a part of their decision-making authority, just like it was Webster's Dictionary. It's pretty huge. But 100% that bitch is also a really good example of why we get trademarks in the first place. Check this out. So after she won her 100% that bitch claim for t-shirts, Lizzo went back and is now trying to do everything from jackets to jerseys, entertainment, everything as it relates to 100% that bitch. And why is she doing that? Does she really intend to sell all of these things under that name? Maybe so, but look at that company. Some other business owner attempted to trademark 100% that bitch for candles, right? But they were denied because of Lizzo's trademark and prior pending applications. But understand, at Lizzo not gone for trademarks and all the other classes of goods, there is a small possibility that this 100% that bitch through candles could have made it through. Here's the lesson. Remember, trademarks work in classes of goods. Think Delta Airlines, Delta Faucets, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. All three of those are Delta trademarks, but there's not a likelihood of confusion. That means no one is going to walk into your local airport and attempt to buy a faucet. And therefore, customers can tell the difference and they can coexist out in the world together in commerce without causing confusion. But when the USPTO evaluates a trademark and they say, hey, these two trademarks are similar and they're kind of in the same area. This one is in clothing, this one is in shoes, or maybe this one is in television and this one is in podcasts. Those things could go into the same areas. It could cause customers to be confused and therefore there's a likelihood of confusion and it won't be approved. So in order to protect 100% that bitch, Lizzo must have a trademark or should have a trademark in the other classes of goods that she does not want it to infringe in. But you can't just get a trademark for something if you're not actually selling it in commerce or intend to sell it in commerce in the near future. Now, every trademark goes through a publication period. So Lizzo could have just objected to this trademark even if the United States Patent and Trademark Office did not find that it was a conflict with hers and prove to them that customers are going to believe that this is coming from Lizzo or somehow connected with Lizzo. And then, of course, you have all of these on Etsy and other places that I found where they are attempting to sell things that are not directly connected with Lizzo but using the trademark that she has just registered. While there are common law trademarks that will allow you to file litigation if someone is infringing on your mark, it does not have that same power and authority that you get when you have a registered trademark to be able to stop someone. Not only can you stop them personally, but now you can go to Etsy or Amazon or all the other places that they may be selling these goods that violate your trademark and show them that you are the trademark owner and this person is infringing on your rights. This is why we get trademarks y'all and if you don't already follow me i'm attorney lbj i'm an intellectual property attorney that helps small businesses understand how trademarks work by talking about 100 that bitch lizzo and all the other cases that go along with it